everybody, Josh again. Welcome back to my channel. This is just going to be a continuation of the cybersecurity interview questions where I kind of uh, just ask questions and then I, I kind of answer the questions uh, as organically as I can to kind of give you an idea of you know how you might be able to answer the same questions or something like this. So uh, I'll just get right into it and continue where I left off. And next question is, uh, tell us about vulnerabilities. What are they? How are they identified and how are they mitigated? Uh, so vulnerability, generally speaking, is just some kind of weakness in some system, whether it's like a, a physical like location can have vulnerabilities or like a software can have vulnerabilities or like a computer system itself can have vulnerabilities. It's just a weakness um, in any kind of given entity, I guess, if you want to be really general about it. Um, so an example of a vulnerability for a facility might be uh, being built on a fault line where there's earthquakes or being built um, above ground in a tornado zone, like something like this. Or it could even be like the facility has like locks that were recalled by the manufacturer because like they don't work very well or something like this. An example of a vulner vulnerability on your home, like Windows PC, for example, might be out of date software that's you know susceptible to buffer overflows or something like this, or you might be running insecure protocols like SMB v1, um, or it could be, could be like a, a misconfiguration on your operating system, like you have no password, for example, or there's no lockout policy, so people can like easily brute force it. So, to get the idea, it's just like a, a general weakness uh, in any kind of system or thing. And vulnerabilities can be identified in like a lot of different ways. Um, you can do some kind of manual inspection of the thing, whether it's like a building or a computer system, like you can look at it and think about it and, and find vulnerabilities that way. Or you can use some kind of automated scanning software like Nessus or uh, Rapid7 Insight VM or Qualys something like this. There's a lot of different ways to identify it, like manual or, or automatic. You can use scanners, a lot of different software to, to identify. And then vulnerabilities are mitigated in like many different ways, like depending on, you know, if it's t going back to the data center, right? If the data center is like built above ground in a tornado zone, like the only way to like really mitigate that is like maybe build it underground or like move it right to somewhere else or replace the locks on it. And like for your, your home computer system, for example, um, your Java is out of date, like to mitigate that, like either uninstall Java or, or update Java, you know, set a password lockout policy or add a password. It just depends on, on what the vulnerability is. What, one way to like mitigate vulnerabilities is to like remove the whole system altogether, right? Like if your, your home computer has java like super old java on it or something like this technically you can remediate the vulnerability by like turning the computer off and like never turning it on again that's technically remediating it but you know of course if you need the functionality of the computer you have to like you know patch java or or uninstall it or or something like this yeah so this question is pretty straightforward um just make sure you know what a vulnerability is and like be cognizant that they're not like only in the computer they can be like a, a bad lock on like a physical door or something like this, or um, it can be like lack of process even, or like lack of policy or procedure. Um, like for example, if you if you don't have like an incident response plan and you haven't practiced it, that that in and itself can kind of be a vulnerability because you won't be able to respond to incidents quickly enough. Of course, those kind of traditional ones that everyone thinks about, like out of date software, poor OS configurations, missing Windows updates or missing OS patches, these kind of things. And to mitigate them or, or to identify them, you know, use your eyeballs or just use some kind of automated software. And then to mitigate them, it just means like how to make them go away. So up, upgrade the locks take the system offline, right? Th this kind of thing. So yeah, there's vulnerabilities. That's a good question, uh, important to understand. And the next question is, you are the only member of the information security risk and compliance team available and the organization experiences a phishing incident. As the only one available, like being you, you are made the incident manager. Please walk us through the steps you would take to manage the incident. So before I get into this, um, I just want to say like if there's a human in front of me i'd probably ask them more questions like what kind of incident like what kind of what kind of phishing like is it like a an email campaign or is it is it like a phone kind of thing like i don't know what it is um so i'm just going to answer this as if it were some kind of like email phishing campaign and like there's there's a lot more i could have asked to the human like to the human interview but i'll, I'll just do my best to answer it so if i was the incident manager for and we we're in a phishing campaign and we had like that phishing incident. The first thing I would kind of do is I would verify that the, the phishing thing had actually taken place. Um, instead of, 
you know, maybe maybe someone, maybe the CISO is performing like an actual campaign where it's not like a real phishing person. It's a, you know, a simulated campaign to kind of get a baseline for the organization's awareness. But if I couldn't do that and I, I you know, I was part of that, I was part of that experiment, um, uh, I would do my best to like, you know, of course, identify those happening and then try to contain it uh, in some way, whether that is, for for example, if we have like exchange online protection or something, I would try to like identify where the phishing campaign was like originating from and try to further prevent that source from being able to send traffic into our network. And then for the stuff that was like already in the inboxes um, in our Outlook or Exchange implementation, I would try to go through and like clean all of those out. And then any of the computers like depending on what was in the fish, if it was like a malicious link or something, I would identify like kind of all the users who were targeted, who like either opened it or had it sent to their inbox. And I would take their their workstation offline again, depending on like what was actually in the fish. So as part of a, the containment part, you know, identify the the scope of what had happened and remove it from the inboxes and take those people's computers offline and the next step i would kind of go into like the maybe like the eradication phase in case any malware was released if we kind of determined there was malware involved all the computers that we took offline of the targeted people we'd go ahead and um, wipe those and re-image them kind of verify that the kind of reached the scope of everyone that was kind of involved and make sure to like re-image all of their all of their uh computers clean up any any malware that could have happened and once we kind of determined that everything was cleaned up and we were no longer kind of receiving uh the phishing from whatever the source was put the new computers back online and we'd kind of have a like a post-mortem meeting where we kind of see if we can learn anything about what happened and kind of reform our incident response process a little bit if we have to and, and just kind of um, do what we can to make us be able to handle the situation like better in the future. So this is like a really hard question. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a correct answer to it, but I, I tried to I tried to answer it in line with like the the NIST 861, I believe, like the computer incident. Let me let me just like look it up really quick right here. Oh, the computer incident handling guideline kind of has like certain steps that you that you follow for like an incident for example like preparation detection and analysis containment eradication and recovery and then kind of post incident activity so i kind of touched on most of these things i didn't talk about preparation because i guess the incident was already happening but uh, detection and, and analysis um detection like make sure that it's actually happening and analysis kind of determine the scope of it and see if there's like any kind of mal Malware involved that might have affected any of your computer systems and then like containment eradication and recovery containment right block the sender from like sending more take the computers offline that got infected eradication like re-image the computers that potentially got affected recovery like uh I guess that's eradication and recovery. It would be like, you know, wiping the computers and re-imaging them. And then I kind of talked about the post-incident thing. I tried to, I tried to like describe this off the top of my head, but I, I couldn't very well but maybe it matched like a little bit if someone gave me the answer that i just gave i'd be like okay they they know what like you know nist 861 is or at least they're familiar with like the incident um kind of the incident handling process at a high level so i, I would look up like uh nist 861 and then you can even there's like some free training online let me look it up that you can do to kind of put on your resume even it's uh the fema training like ics uh, so Google like FEMA, FEMA ICS 100, it's kind of like a, I forget what ICS stands for, incident command system. It's kind of like an incident handling thing and you can get a certificate and you can like put it on your, on your resume. So yeah, NIST 861 and then FEMA ICS kind of, you know, digest those and you'll be able to answer kind of similar questions in this. This is kind of a long one, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Again, I didn't articulate it that well, but maybe you get the idea. So those were actually pretty long questions and I'll, I'll just kind of cut it at this video so it doesn't get too long, but I'll, I have a, a lot more to do. So uh, just continue watching uh, for more interview questions. Again, if I messed up, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have questions or anything, again, make a comment. I, I read and respond to everybody's comments. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this series and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.